here and to meet all of you. I know I have sent an email to at least one person from every single family that's here. So oh, that, that might be helpful. Thank you. Um, so yeah, I just want to echo that and thank you all for making the journey. And again, Michelle did mention that I'm a child life specialist and um, we are actually going to have a child life specialist here presenting tomorrow. So you will get to learn a lot more about that from her. But just a quick overview. Um, Child Life is a psychosocial support um, program for children who are experience illness or hospitalization. So we do a lot of developmentally appropriate play with kids to help them understand what's going on and to help make sure that they're hitting as many of those development, developmental milestones as they can despite you know some of the stresses um, and the limitations of having to go through treatment or be in the hospital. So um, we're gonna touch on a little bit more of that, but first I wanted to explain because the family service um, programs are, rel I mean, they've been existing for a long time, but the position is relatively new. So um, who is family services and what do we do? There's several different things. We are the family services manager, me. There is a quality of life awards committee that meets to um, review those applications. We're gonna talk more about that later. Um, there is an FOP connect committee that meets um, to support our peer mentor program, which we're gonna discuss. And then there is a resource connect working committee and then coming very soon a family services committee. So we wanted, I wanted to talk about these things so that everyone understands that it really is um, you know, one staff that is supported by members from the community in a variety of different roles. So the people on these com um, committees are individuals with FOP, their parents, and they're all having their voices heard and contributing to the programs as they're developing. Um, and what do we do? Well, we're gonna go through and sort of a general overview and focus on a few new and exciting things um, that kind of demonstrate the support, the education, and the resources that we, do, we offer through the family services. So we're gonna start with support. Um, and Michelle has touched on the online presence and that's such an amazing thing about this community that everyone is so connected. Technology has allowed us to have these support groups online. And these are also um, facilitated by members of the community. So there's definitely a strong presence of having those people involved and having them insert their knowledge and making sure that everyone is staying up to date on the information that they're able to input in those ways. Um, they are, if you're not into Facebook, which is I think the main support group offering, there's also closed email groups. So if you're not a Facebook person, you can join um, the FOP online Yahoo email and that all of the information um, that gets posted in our newsletters is also sent out on those email chains. So you're staying connected that way as well. Um, and then I wanted to just touch briefly on the guidebooks because these are amazing resources and they're something that I used um, when I was relatively new to this community to help, help under, understand um, and learn more about FOP. So this first one with the beautiful butterfly, the what is FOP, that is a great, it's a big book with lots of helpful information, but it really walks you through a lot of different details about, um, you know, what are the respiratory health and the dental and the more specific things like, can I get a piercing or a tattoo? It kind of addresses all of those things in this book. And then there is the children's support version. So this was created um, by Marilyn Hare, and I know she's here tonight, so I wanted to give Marilyn and her daughter, um, Sarah Steele, who helps create this, it, yeah. So this is a beautiful book. The child life and specialist to me just loves it. I mail it to every family I can who has a little one because um, it has some developmentally appropriate explanations of FOP. And it, I think it's just a great tool for kids to be able to take to school if they want to share with their peers. It has um, drawings in it from kids in the community. So that's also just a really nice thing for them to have a more personal touch. But one of the um, supports that we're gonna dive a little deeper into because it's so important and it's available to every individual with FOP is the Quality of Life Award. So as I mentioned, it's available to any individual with FOP, US, international, there's no um, limits there. It is a $1,500 lifetime scholarship. So you can use it at any point throughout your life. Um, you can use it in increments, you can use it all in one time, but you get this one scholarship that, to use at any point. Um, and it is for items that improve the health, welfare, and independence. So there is, this is sort of a broad category and people are probably like, well, 
what is that? Does this apply? And that is why we have the Quality of Life Awards Committee to meet to review those things and make sure that that money is really being put to a use that um, is going to benefit that person in the long haul. So this is just a little snapshot of the application. And you have also, I think Michelle mentioned this, the brochure in your um, attendee folder. So if you want to learn more about that, there's lots of information there. But this is available online. It can be translated if that's helpful. And it is really just a quick form to fill out. So it's not something that is going to take you, you know, days to complete. It's really a, um, a simple and easy process. And then the second um, support program that I wanted to call attention to and dive a little deeper into is our program called FOP Connect. It is a peer mentor program. So um, you see a few familiar faces again. Marilyn, that's twice now that I'm calling you out. Um, we have Joe. I know he's here tonight as well. Um, these are a few of our mentors. And if you, you know, are interested in joining as a mentee, we actually have um, a page of all of our mentors. And so a few fun facts. Um, you get, actually get to choose your mentor. So we wanted people to be able to choose someone that they feel like they can relate to. So each mentor has sort of like a bio and a snapshot of who they are and um, sort of some of the experiences they have as being a member of the FOP community. Um, you get to decide how frequently you and your mentor communicate. So we wanted this program to be something that works for the community. We didn't want it to be a job for you or something that you felt like you had to maintain. So it's really flexible and something that we, you and your mentor um, can come to an understanding of what works best for you. And then lastly, you can decide how long you want to be involved. So a lot of programs say, you know, if you're a mentee, you do a two-year mentorship. But as a peer mentor program, we wanted you to feel like, you know, this was something that you could use for six months if you felt like you just needed someone to help you get through, you know, an adjustment that you're going through. Or we wanted it to also be something that if it's a good friendship that you wanted to maintain for years, I mean, you could be paired with someone for a very long time. So, um, but yeah, this, the peer mentor program is peers to peers. So that is parents um, and as individuals with FOP, it is friends or extended family. Um, and so we really tried to capture that in our mentee or our mentor base to have a variety of different roles that people can relate to. So it is open to everyone. And we like to think of it as, you know, more of a friendship where one person is there to help encourage someone that has questions and is looking to navigate new challenges. So the next thing we're going to talk about is education. This was the second component, and there's a lot of things that go into this. But um, I know it's late, and everyone's had a long day. So we're going to do um, more of a basic overview of some of them. We're going to dive deeper into one of them. But education happens in a lot of different ways. We have our newsletters. Um, so that's FOP Connection, the community updates that have a lot of helpful little tidbits. So if you're someone who digests information in small chunks, look at those newsletters and pick out one thing and just learn from that. And it, we also post those things on Facebook. So if you miss the newsletter, stay in tune to that to our Facebook account because you'll see those things coming up and you can get those small kind of like tidbits of information. Um, we have several different online resources. So on our website, we have a variety of those. One, a couple of ones that I just wanted to point out um, were the FOP school guide. And I know that um, there's another version of that that Chris Bedford Gay's wife and him are working on. So, you know, there will be um, continued development in that area as well. And then there's also, for example, a personal care attendant, so helping you manage and select a personal care attendant um, webinars. So if you're someone who, ha who likes to be inter an interactive learner and to ask questions as things are going, we have web webinars on a variety of topics. Um, most recently, we've done an ABLE accounts one. We've done some on clinical trials. So if you're someone who, has, who really likes to have their questions answered, that might be a great way for you. Um, to learn more, and then the family gathering. So we don't have as many of these person-to-person -person, um, opportunities, but there's a lot of things going on this weekend that I know you all are well aware of, and Michelle has mentioned. Um, but just to name a few, the Ask a Doctor, Ask a Dentist meetings, helping you become better advocates for your, your medical needs, and um, the breakout sessions, which Michelle touched on, and then one other thing um, that we're looking to do in the future, and for this year, we will have um, 
recordings of the presentations, so people who aren't here can go back and watch those, but in the future we would love to be able to live stream this, so that if you're not able to come to you know, the next region that we move to, you can still log on or get on the website, the internet, and participate virtually. So you would have you know, opportunities to ask questions and almost be in attendance even if you couldn't travel over that. So the one um, online education resource that I wanted to dive a little deeper into and um, focus on because it is newer and because it um, is something that I wanted to just keep on the surface as we're going to be talking about this throughout the weekend on Saturday as well, um, is the supporting your child during a stressful procedure. So this is a great example of um, a resource that has links to other websites so you can learn more. If you just want a quick overview, this is great for that, but if you want to learn more and really dive deeper into the content, there's more links on here for you to be able to do that. And then there's also a personalized um, um, certificate. Sorry, I was blanking on the word. So you can download a certificate and fill it out with your child's name. You can find something that they, they did really well in that procedure and recognize them to help promote that um, continued improvement and um, ability to participate in the procedure. So that is one online educational resource that I wanted to highlight. Um, the next thing we're going to talk about is more of our general resources. So Michelle had mentioned Pinterest, and I don't know how many of you um, are on Pinterest, but Pinterest is a really great tool if you're a visual learner. So if you're someone who likes to just be able to look at it and be like, oh, this is what I need, or this is, um, oh, this is how this works, to get a better concept of what you need for something. Pinterest um, is a really simple platform to use. You create an account. And then once you've created that account, you don't have to set up your own page. It's not like Facebook where you have to have like a profile developed. You can just search International FOP Association. It'll bring you to this screen right here. And then on our screen, you can click on boards. And you'll see we have a variety of boards from you know home adaptions to tips and tools for traveling to hobbies and skills. And one that I highlighted was our school resource. So, this um, board particularly has a lot of different resources that have been developed by the community. Um, it has the FOP school guide that we have posted on our website, but it also has links to different tools that are useful in the classroom. So if there's a desk that may be helpful in supporting your child, there's a link to where you can get that or a photo of what it looks like. So it's sort of an easy like shop all <laughs> or shop one place shopping um, to learn more about those sorts of things. Other resources to just kind of um, explore the variety of things is the medical treatment guidelines and emergency medical information. So that's again just another helpful tool for you and being an advocate for your medical needs when you're meeting with your doctor. Um, and then our FOP YouTube channel. So there's some um, older videos and there's some more recent videos and I think it's great to explore this if you're looking for ways to share or to teach others in your community or friends or family about FOP. There's some really great videos in there that kind of explain and walk through this and have a nice personal touch. So. Um, the, <laughs> the resource that I wanted to dive a little deeper into is the FOP patient directory. And this is our good friend AJ up on the screen. He looks a little younger there, I think. But um, the FOP patient directory, for those of you who don't know, is a directory where there's individual profiles of um, individuals with FOP. And so you can um, log on, create a profile. It's also just a form that you fill out. And then once you have an account, you can log in and you can actually search by state. So if you're looking to find someone, you're going to be traveling and you want to visit someone who lives in Texas while you're there, um, you can search in Texas. And then once you've created a profile, you have the option to make it viewable. So if you want someone to be able to find you, you can click the share my profile or make my profile viewable. And then people allow, it allows people to meet up with you when they're in your area or if they live near you and they want to connect. So um, this is another really great resource that I wanted to explain. Um, now just a quick look at what's to come, because I know it's always exciting to think about the future and where we're going. Um, the Resource Connect, we're going to hear more about this tomorrow, um, but it is a really exciting project that we're working on and something that I think is going to be a huge benefit to the community, so I wanted to mention that. And then we're also working on updating our emergency tools and our emergency information cards um, so that that has the most recent information I know. You have gotten a brochure about the Biobank, which um, just recently launched. So that information will also be reflected in these new updates that we'll do to that. 
Um, and lastly, I just wanted to thank you. And, and this isn't like a thank you for listening to me present. This is um, a thank you for being so open as someone who I started um, in April and you know, working from home, I don't, I didn't necessarily have the opportunity to see the community members every day, but I was so um, just awestruck by how welcoming you all were and how willing you all were to share your knowledge and to reach out and really help me get more involved with the community. So um, I am so grateful to all of you and I wanted to take this opportunity to thank you all for, for reaching out and sharing your story with me or sharing your information with me because it's allowed me to do my job better and I hope that that serves you all better as well. So it's really a community effort and I wanted to thank you all for that. Um. <laughs>